Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Saturday afternoon. I say another like we do it all the time. <laughs> Probably the only Saturday afternoon basketball game you're going to get here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network for the boys because the girls' sectional finals tonight. Traditionally, the boys play the afternoon, the girls play the evening just to make room for the fans to get there, and if your team happens to be there, ours is not. Falling in defeat to North Miami there in the last uh, waning second of the game there in the girls' section at Culver. So we're here in uh, Caston High School here. Uh, Cass, that's Cass in uh, Fulton County right there on the line. So Caston High School, red, white, and blue, home of the Comets. It's a nice gym, kind of a nice old gym. And uh, really enjoy being here. Uh, appreciate the hospitality for everyone giving us the opportunity to come here and broadcast. You're listening to the Triton Trojan Sports Network. With me tonight, of course, is the velvet voice of the Trojans, young Carson Kraft. Yeah. Glad, He's glad, awake. I'm awake. <laughs> glad to be here for uh, this, this afternoon contest. Uh, Triton coming in 11 and 6, casting at 6 and 11. Uh, of course, Triton coming off that uh, almost embarrassing loss at home Thursday night against Argus. They just came out flat. They weren't ready to play. Argus outworked them uh, and, won, I'm, I'm and really, won pretty I'm glad, easily. Yeah, I'm glad that's over. I really am. Well, it's time to bounce back here. Uh, they've got a great opportunity to do it. They're on the road. Uh, they're facing a cast, a team that struggled this season, just 6-11, and 11, and they're under first-year head coach uh, Kyle Evans. Kyle, like I mentioned, if you were uh, tuned in for the JV contest, he's 6-11 and 11 this year. Uh, he went 3-20 and 20 last year at West Central in his first go-around as a head coach. Uh, getting another shot here um, at cast, and from everything you can see, they've played uh, pretty tough for the most part, but they've come out on the short end a few times this season, and they've got a losing record there at 6-11. and 11. Uh, Like I mentioned, uh, this team, Triton last playing cast in last year, well, last season, it was uh, December of 2014, a 53-27 win at home for Triton. Uh, on the road, Triton really seemed to be getting things going in the right direction, Bill, after that win in the Bay County, and they had a couple others to follow. Well, and they followed that up with a win as well. Uh, and then they kind of, like we mentioned, just came out completely flat against Argus and got handled at home. Uh, and looking for the bounce back here, like I mentioned, I think that starts for the Trojans with Jordan Anderson. Uh, Jordan's the senior leader of the team, and he really had a tough outing against Argus. Uh, and that's bound to happen every now and then, but it's about how you get back up. Absolutely. Everybody gets knocked down. I like to see the guy that steps back up. And I'll be honest with you, when you when you think, you know, you got some good you got some good kids out there playing ball, you got Mason Yo who uh, has the capability of just being an outstanding uh, point getter and defender. And then you got Grant Johnson at 6'6 in the middle, who goes 0 for, I don't know what he went 0 for. Uh, he couldn't hit water from the boat. And then, you know, you, of course, you got Jordan Anderson out there. When three of three aren't helping, that can be a long night, and folks, it was. But you know what? Our kids are resilient. Love watching them play. They got great attitudes. They reset themselves. That game's behind us. We're done with it. Won't talk about it again until next year. Yeah, and today's kind of a take two for Jason Groves trying to notch win 200. Uh, missed out on that opportunity at home against uh, Argus on Thursday, like we mentioned. But uh, the fans have traveled well here today for a Saturday new afternoon contest against Cast to see if we can get it done here. Uh, and if he can reach that milestone in his career, certainly uh, hope that it happens this afternoon. Uh, just going through Cast in a little bit. Um, Caston is ranked in the Sagar and in Class 1A, they're 78th. Triton, by comparison, is 14th. Uh, so Caston's one of the schools that uh, hasn't performed up to what they've expected this season. They've really struggled. Um, the series the last 14 years, though, between these two have been really tight, 14 to 14. And actually, Caston, it's pretty neat. They, uh, I don't know if you noticed it. I in did. Their, they put all the games in their on the package. back with the yeah, scores. Every single game these two teams have ever played. Uh, and going through it, it's almost win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. I mean, no. these two really battle when they get together. Triton 25 wins all time to Caston's 23. So this is always a tight series, uh, maybe more so than Triton fans like to acknowledge. And I think uh, we're going to be in for a, a really physical, tough contest again today that Triton's going to have to grind out. Hey, we finally got the right music up. Congratulations. That's the playing of our national anthem, and we're ready and set for some basketball here today, this afternoon.
Yeah, Caston with a nice mix of size and experience out there uh, for Coach Evans. Triton not going to be a lot bigger than Caston. Starting for Triton, number 10, he's a senior, 5'10", Jarrett Kreft. Also starting for Triton, number 12, a 6'4", senior, Mason Yo. At the other guard position, at 5'10", and a senior, Jordy Anderson. Coming in at 6'3". Starting for the Trojans, number 22, Dalton Bailey. Rounding out the top five for your Triton Trojans here this afternoon at Castum High School is the six foot six junior Grant Johnson. For the Caston Comets, Kinzer. 5'10 junior Douglas. Hunter Babb is a 6'2 junior. A 5'10 junior at a forward position, Trent Howard. Rounded it out, 6'3 senior, Brayton, Brayton Jellison. Yeah, Jellison's a guy that's going to uh, test physically inside Mason Yo and Grant Johnson. they got to be ready to respond. Uh, he's a multi-sport athlete. I know we've seen him play football for casting. Uh, he's got a motor that doesn't stop, and he is tough to stop at times if he gets going. So Triton uh, got to first try and slow Jellison down tonight, I think. Eli Douglas also a uh, name, Trey Young as well, that we remember from football. A couple of skilled athletes on the floor for casting. Grant Johnson to jump it up. I think they probably weigh the same. <laughs> probably. We got the weights listed here for casting, which I thought was really neat. There he goes. Give him a big hand. Help him off the floor today. He always looks to the Young man bringing the basketball, the game ball out there, center court, uh, bringing it out in a wheelchair, and we just appreciate that. Don't know if he ran out of battery or not. <laughs> Clock's ready at eight minutes. It's got, set. Tune in. Sit back. Relax. You're listening to the Triton Trojan Sports Network. Two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore for the Comets as we're underway. The tip is won by the Trojans. Tap back into the hands of Kreft, and he walks it across for the Trojans to get us started. Cast an opening in a man defense. That ball's handed off to Bailey, top of the key. Bailey holds it up high. Takes it to the right wing and gives it off for Anderson. Anderson back to Bailey on the baseline. Top of the key, now just inside the arc to Grant Johnson. Johnson hands it behind him to Anderson. Left wing to Mason Yo. Yo holding on to it there against Douglas. Crosses over, kicks it out for Dalton Bailey. And now gets it right back. Yo slicing in, kicks it out. Anderson open for three, right nope. wing, good. Gets wet from three is Jordy Anderson. That's how you want to start the game off, folks. And we were talking about it's got to start for him. Uh, kind of get Triton going after a tough night against Argus, and he has a great start to the game here up with a three-pointer on the first possession. Triton looking to pick up some trapping pressure. Here's a steal by Yo. Yo bounces it ahead for Johnson, running the other way. He laid it up and in. 5-0 start for the Trojans. Left side of the basket, folks, for Grant Johnson. Two of the kids that probably had the toughest nights on Thursday for the Trojans with the first two baskets. Good to see if you're a Triton fan. Left wing, there's a three on the way from Jellison off the mark, and Grant Johnson goes up and grabs the rebound. That's how you clear a board. Here's Kreft across the timeline, top of the key with the basketball, stops, hands it over to Mason Yo on the right wing, now to Jordan Anderson, top of the key. Anderson holds on to it there, has a screen coming, drives into the lane, kicks it out for a Yo three-pointer, not there. Rebound tapped around, and it comes away for Cast into the hands of Brandon Kinzer. Excuse me, Kat, yeah, Kinzer. There's a three on the way off the mark for Caston, and Anderson has the rebound. Anderson over the rim on that one. Hunter Babb with the misfire there for Caston. Here's Kreft top the key. Over on the left wing, it comes to Jordan Anderson. Anderson over against Jellison over there. A big mismatch in size. Jellison quite a bit bigger. It's a zone now for Caston, it appears, as it's bounced on the baseline for Grant Johnson. Johnson holding on to it. Baseline left side. Kicks it to Anderson. Three on the way. Top of the key. Not there. Kreft has the rebound and pulls it back out for Triton. A little bit of a fortunate rebound there for Triton. Bounced right into his hands, and they'll get a reset. 5.50 to play in the first quarter between Triton and Caston. Here at Caston, it's Triton 5 and Caston nothing. 
Here's Kreft, top the key, bounces it high post for Dalton Bailey. Bailey at the foul line, hits Anderson on the cut underneath, and Look he got a reverse dime. layup. Quick timeout for I was going to say, got to be a timeout at 7-love here. 30-second timeout for Caston and Coach Kyle Evans. Uh, Triton off to a great start, Bill, and I, I can't say that it's necessarily unexpected, Bill. No. No, you I would know not. they want to get that bad taste out of their mouth. Absolutely, and I, don't want to be, I wouldn't have wanted to be in practice. No. <laughs> so it looks like the Trojans are focused and ready to play here on the road. Probably the most fortunate thing for those kids is it's a quick turnaround to this game today. Right. Coach didn't get as much time to get after him in <laughs> practice as he maybe wanted to. We get some redemption here, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> nice 7-0 start for the Trojans. Anderson yeah, and everybody, with five. Everybody getting the right touches. I'm getting the right touches and the right looks down here offensively. So It's amazing how much different a team can look a day and a half later. Obviously just underway here. And Caston trying to get refocused a little bit. Uh, Caston, although they're on their home floor, probably knew they were going to take a punch from Triton to start the game uh, after the performance Triton had the other day. Uh, for Caston now about counterpunching, trying to get on the board here. As we're back to action, the ball's bounced in. Off it comes for Kinzer around on the left wing for number 22, Rensler, who's in the game for the first time. Over on the left wing, the basketball in the hands of Eli Douglas. Bounced there in. Go. There's a pass on the baseline, tipped away and stolen. Dalton That's, Bailey with the touch. He's active. That's two touches for him on turnovers. Well, Bailey's got to be fired up. Didn't get a play much in that game against right. Argus. Says, There's Anderson with another beautiful cut underneath. Wow. And out of bounds on that one was Douglas as he came up with a steal momentarily. Nice. Going to get another shot here for Triton. But that's something I think about Jordan. I think he probably realized after that game he settled just a little bit, took a few too many outside, and he wants to attack. We've seen that twice already now as the ball's thrown in for Anderson. In the left corner it comes for Kreb. Yeah, Jordy does a great job mixing things up too on his shot. So There's a pass stolen away for Caston. Off the hands of Bailey. Trenton Howard with the pilfer. Left wing it comes for Douglas. Douglas over in the right corner to Kinzer, back to Douglas, left wing against Anderson, off to Kinzer, right wing for Howard Caston just flipping it around the perimeter here left wing with the basketball for Caston is Rentschler ripped in the right corner, that pass nearly lost out of bounds, good save by Kinzer Caston continuing to probe around the perimeter, there's oh. a bump called against Dalton Bailey Yeah, couldn't get, uh, couldn't get a stop button out I actually like that uh, switch. What's that? Well, Jordy comes out and grabs it, and by Bailey just comes right out, picks up the, uh, the offensive guy coming in down low, so he just didn't get stopped quick enough. Here's Caston to throw it in under their own basket. Bounced inside, kicked out to Howard. Over on the left wing now for Douglas. Douglas back to Howard, just playing catch out there. Left wing it comes now for Kinzer. Kreft all over him defensively as the ball's in the hands of Michael Remley, who's in for the first time. Yeah, and Bailey out. Did you already say that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Pitney came in for him there. Dalton continues to start. Pitney getting starters minutes, though, as the ball's flipped around the perimeter here for Howard. Bounced off now for Douglas underneath and kicked out for a three from Lenchler from the left wing that's off the mark. Pushed and there's off. a push Thank off. you very much. That fouls against Michael Remley, the 6'4 senior center. I was center. just getting ready to ask, how does that guy re out-rebound a 6'6 uh, six, six guy who's well over the rim? Gives him a little touch in the back. That's how he does it. Here's Jellison and Babb back in for Caston. That's the first foul on uh, him. Howard and Douglas get a seat. Ball's flipped in by Pitney to the hands of Kreft. He'll walk it up for the Trojans. 7-0 Triton lead. They've got the basketball looking to add on. Kreft takes it to the right wing, bounces it off to Pitney. Pitney brings it over to the left side for Anderson, who thought about a long three and decided better of it. He is not allergic to that shot as long as it goes in. Anderson out near midcourt with the basketball. Right wing to Kreft. Inside it comes to Pitney, who goes up strong inside and scored oh, two. Pitney, I tell you what, he's doing a great job inside. Great footwork. A nice job to sink in the middle of that zone. And there's a steal for Anderson the other way. Puts it up and in. Jordy, get it back. Gets a deuce. Great use of his body on that power layup. Across the timeline in a hurry. That's Kinzer. Kinzer stops, bounces it in. Kicked out left wing for Jellison. Darts down the baseline. Flips it off for a jumper. And, well, passing that up was bad. I thought he was going to pull the trigger there. Decided not to as Anderson closed out quickly. He drug his pivot foot a foot and a half down there to get that There's Kinzer turned around. knocking one off the side of the backboard out of bounds. Caston will maintain. Triton must have had a deflection on it. Caston had all ran down the floor. 
He's saying Triton deflected it into the backboard and it went out of bounds. Okay. Triton had nice uh, pressure over there. Yeah, they did. A good trap between Yo and uh, Johnson, I believe. As looking to get it in as Kinter kicks it in the right corner for a three by Douglas. That's well short. Rebound to Mason Yo. Every one of their every one of their outside shots are short. Here's Yo pushing the other way. Gets in, kicks it out right wing for uh, Johnson around the horn. It comes to Anderson quickly on the baseline. Johnson kicks it out for Yo. Top the key three on the way. Good. Mason Yo getting uh, busy now. Triton His running away three. in a hurry here. Fourteen nothing quickly for the Trojans. Trapped up top. Kinzer tosses it off for Remley. Right wing it comes to Douglas in the corner for Babb. Babb trapped by Anderson and Kreft, and he threw it away. Here's Yo the other way, one-on-one. Yo all the way to the hoop, puts it up. Got it to drop. Look, you know, that's awesome. Five points for Yo. Just going straight to the rack on him on the left side, a little class. School's in session. <laughs> Beat Douglas to the hoop. It was a pretty finish. He did. 16 to nothing, Triton. And I thought they'd come out quick, but this is an incredible start for the Trojans. Jarrett Martin set to check in for the Trojan. Nate Flunner. Here's Kinzer against Kreft. Left wing, it comes to Jellison. He's trapped and fouled. And I think Zach Pitney going to get that one for the Trojans. Yes, he is. Zach gets his first foul, second team. Here's Trenton Howard back for cast and coming and out is, is Remley. Still 16 love. Kreft and Anderson to the bench for Nate Flenner and Jarrett Martin making their first appearances. Here's Howard flipping it into Jellison in the right corner. All the way across the court for Douglas. Off to Kinzer to Howard, left wing. Triton sitting in that 1-3-1. It's bounced into Bab, kicked out to Howard. Howard stops, bounces it around. Mason Yell at the top of that trap. Right side of the floor it comes. There's a pass to Howard, nearly intercepted by Pitney. I thought he going to get called for another foul. Here's Bab at the foul line, spinning, kicked it to Howard. Howard had trouble to handling that one, does so, and flips it off to Jellison. Back it comes once again into the hands of Kinzer. Here's Bab foul line, spinning in, throws it up over Martin, couldn't get it to drop, rebound tapped up by Jellison, got it back, throws it up, scored it, and drew the foul. Good Good call that on Grant. Nope, going to call it on Jarrett Martin. Some determination there for Braden Jellison, though. Oh, they're going to put that on the floor. Triton remains. I agree with that. Triton keeps the shutout for at least a skosh longer. As here's Brent Knotts into the game for Grant Johnson. Triton with a real mix mix and match lineup in there now. Just two starters remaining in the game now for Coach Groves. There it is. Your first point for the contest. Braden Jellison, if you can remember that name. Jellison splashing home a runner there. Under a minute to play in the first quarter. Right on the midline stripe. This is Johnson, or Martin, excuse me. Nearly threw it away into the hands of Flenner. Gets it right back. Bounced on the baseline for Yo. Goes up strong. Had a block. Got his own rebound. And Patton, scored it. Patton his stats down there is Mason Yo with his seventh point. 18-2 for Triton. Here's Jellison. Across the timeline, it comes to Kinzer. That pass is deflected by Flenner into the hands of Martin. Nice job for Flenner. Martin stumbling the other way, and he traveled as he fell over on the break. And it'll go back to Caston with 34.6 seconds to go. Caston looking to get their fourth point of the quarter. Maybe five if they shoot from the perimeter. Trenton Howard on the baseline. Gavin Eads coming in. Going to give Yo a break. Now you've got all your subs in. Literally. Yeah, no starters in the contest now for Coach Groves. Uh, he's got Flinner and Pitney in there. The other guys really don't play very regular minutes, and no. we're in the first quarter. Yes. Interesting for Coach Groves. I wonder if he's worried about the legs because uh, it was a quick turnaround from a game against Argus where we played a lot of trapping zone and really ran a lot in that game. The only explanation I can have for these early entries of these guys is that ball is bounced off of Triton out of bounds. Mott's at 6'6 six, six down there, doing a good job down low. Moving his feet. I thought he was going to call for a foul, but he didn't, which is. 7.8 to plays. It's bounced in the corner to Jellison. Off to Douglas. Now to Kinzer with Jared Martin all over him. In the post, it comes for Jellison. Hits the cutting Howard for two at the buzzer. And it's 18 to 4 after the first quarter of play. Triton jumping out to a 16 zip advantage. Caston finishing that on a 4-2 to two run. I guess a little yeah, Yo hope and, there for the comments. Yeah, Yo and Anderson both with sevens. Uh, Pitney with a deuce and Johnson with a deuce. Uh, three fouls for Triton. One on Martin. One on Bailey and one on Pitney. 
Caston, on the other hand, uh, Howard with a deuce, Jellison with a deuce, and one team foul, and uh, Rimley gets that one. Caston seemed completely bewildered on how to attack that 1-3-1. Yeah. And uh, it led to an ugly start to the game for the Comets. Uh, like we mentioned, kind of stabled themselves down the stretch there in the first quarter, but a lot of that uh, is the subs that were thrown in there for Coach Groves. Really went deep into the bench there in the first quarter. Probably the earliest entry we've seen for Gavin Eads and Brent Motts all season. Uh, I would say absolutely. So we got the starters back in. They're back to action. The Trojans starting five with an 18-4 lead here to start the second quarter. See if they can get it going again. They really had it going to begin this game. Jordan Anderson looking sharp in the early going, as well as Mason Yo and a couple of the others. As sending back out the starting five for Caston as well. Hey, want to shout out during this intermission on Gage Waddle and Malachi Green on advancing to the semi state, making it through the regionals of Rochester. Excellent job by those two. That's as a travel. Ball's thrown across for Kinzer. After Howard split the trap, left wing bounced in the post for Babb. Babb kicks it in the corner for Jellison, and Jellison is bumped really? by Anderson. Stop that. Yeah, I don't know what they look at when they make that call. His hips were well. His body position was right where it should have been. Yeah, it was squared to the fender, had his hands up. Jeez. Anderson gets the first foul, team fourth. Across the timeline with the basketball. That's Kinzer, bounces it right wing for Howard. Tried to get it in the post to Babb. Caught it as he was falling down. They kick it in the corner, driving down the baseline. Babb gets it back, had it blocked underneath by Yo, And Mason will bring it ahead for the Trojans. Nice defensive help there from Mason Yo. Here is Anderson with the basketball, handing it off to Kreft. Out near midcourt between the circle. 7.20 to play in the second quarter. It's Triton 18, cast in four. Here's Anderson flipping it underneath for Yo. Yo throws it up and in. A lot of room to operate down there for Mason Yo. 20 to 4, Triton. Nine points for Yo. Here's Howard with the basketball, brings it across against Kreft. Kreft cuts him off, picks it up, hands it off for Douglas. Douglas spins past Kreft, takes it into the left wing, now pulls it out and throws it over for Kinzer, top of the key. Looks like Jarrett's trying to taste his gum. <laughs> Right wing, there's a three on the way from Douglas. That's well short. Rebound, tapped around. Kreft pulled it out of there for the Trojans. Here's Kreft racing the other way. Triton running in transition. Stops, gives it off to Anderson. Long three on the way. Now, oh, it is good. Wet for Jordy Anderson again. Thought it was going to sail just a smidge long, but he dropped it in there, and it's 23-4. to four. Ten points for Jordan. When Anderson has got it going, he can shoot from way outside. That he, one. Uh, he's got the green light from half court. I've seen him do it. That one was, what, five feet behind the line? Easily. Nothing but net, and it's 23-4. to four. Those are the assists you love getting credited with right Look there. Look at that tap by Jordan There's right a there. steal by Mason. Other way, tried to dunk it, and he's fouled, and he'll shoot a pair. Yeah. Shot rattled out. I get it, young man. You want to jam one down, but off the glass is better. Bottom five coming in for Caston. What's he got, 10 kids down there? Got another one sitting on the bench? I don't see one. I can't tell. Looks like a full line change. Yep, full line change for Caston coming in. As Yo is good on the first. It's 24-4. to Triton now in front by 20. Full line change for the Comets. Bunch of new white uniforms in. All matching. Rentschler's back in there. Remley's back in. He eyes it and flies it off the glass, rattles it around, gets the uh, hometown roll here in Caston. Matt Rands, who terrorized Triton in the early going in the JV game before being slowed down in the second half, is in the game. Uh, number 21, Garrett Boldry. There's a steal by Kreft, and the layup is good. Nice. Jared Kreft gets the deuce. Yeah, sometimes putting your starting five on the bench and going with some younger guys seems like a good move well, until they get on the floor. And yeah, you just got to... 27 to 4, Triton. Yeah, you got to go with what you got to go with here, Coach. And I think he's, uh, I mean, obviously he's not experimenting. Uh, we've played how many games already? 16, 17 games? Yeah, You're done experimenting. You're done trial. Now it's motivating. Well, yeah. Now it's if you want to play, you're going to play or you're going to set the bench. Trying so. to get this starting five going. Triton uh, absolutely on fire to start this game. Only four points for Caston. 
uh, almost midway through the second quarter here. I think uh, Coach Groves has got to be beyond pleased with the start here and the response they've had uh, to that loss against Argus. Token pressure by Jarrett. Same five out there for Cast and Triton picking up an extended 1-3-1 one, one as Rentschler brings it across. Had it poked there away it and stolen. Here's Kreft ahead of the pack all the way to the hoop and got yeah, it to drop. Keeps it himself. That was a great decision by Jarrett. 29-4. Triton by 25. You're going to see a little bit more of this. Because here, here comes the trap. Wherever that ball comes across. Right there. There's a near steal uh, by Dalton, Dalton Bailey. Bailey. He's going to get rung up on the foul. That's two on Dalton. Dag on it. Dalton almost, when he, most times when he gets his fouls, he's a half step late to a steal. That was the case there, and he he's picks up his and, second. And he knew where the ball was going. Brent Mott's checking in. <laughs> Bailey just walks to the bench. <laughs> he's seen it too many times this season. Oh, yeah, and here comes Johnson back in. Pitney and Mott in. Good to see Brett Mott's getting some time. Here's Boldry in the middle. It comes for Rands, drops it off for Rentschler. His shot's off the mark. Rebound tapped around. Anderson has it for the Trojans, and he double dribble, apparently. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Boldry. Did you say Boldry down there? Is there a Boldry? Yeah, there is a Boldry on this team. I wonder if that's any kin to the guy that called the game. Uh, I bet it is. I they look alike. I have no idea. There's some family resemblance there. Nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Boldry's trapped out near midcourt, works around Yo and bounces it off. Pass is thrown in the middle for Rands. Back to Boldry. Right wing it comes for Remley. His pass is intercepted as he tried to go cross court. Here's Pitney racing Bobby. the other way, puts it up, oh. missed it. Rebound to Anderson. Jordan goes up strong, lost it no out of foul. bounds. No foul down there. Are you serious? And apparently he threw it out of bounds on his own, and it'll go yeah. to casting. It miracled itself out of bounds. That's a terrible call. There, there you, go. you go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Sometimes you got to get together. They made the right call I after a conference. I appreciate that. On a 29-4 game to get together like that, hats off to you gentlemen. I'll be nice the rest of the way. Here's Kreft looking to inbound. Kicks of, it in for Pitney right wing. Of the quarter. Off to Kreft. Top the key. Right wing for Anderson. Long three on the way. Good again. Boy, Jordy Anderson not to be denied from three. That's his third three of the contest. Caston's got to feel like they just ran into a buzzsaw. Cash money. Triton is absolutely on fire as Boldry has it splitting the double team. Lost the handle. Ball's on the floor. Mott's diving Mott. for it. And Caston able to pull it out of there. There's Remley. He had it stolen by Kreft. He lost the handle trying to dribble through it. Stolen back again by Yo. And Triton has it. Oh, yeah. Here's Anderson ball. open for three left wing. Go! Jordan <laughs> Anderson hits his fourth three of the contest. That Triton. man is not to be denied. Plus 31 now for the Trojans. They are doing major damage with this trapping zone. Here's Boldry trying to create a little space. Ball's on the ground, ripped away by Yo, and he's fouled by Boldry. <laughs> Yo's Yo like, give me them cookies. I'm taking your lunch money. I want it all. Wow. Triton's varsity team is, is virtually playing the JV squad right now from Caston, though. Yeah. I don't know how long Coach Evans stays with this lineup. Yeah, long could, enough to get the point across, I guess. If, it, if, it, if the point's not across now, it ain't going to get there. Jarrett Martin back in the game for the Trojans along with Nate Flenner. Pitney, Anderson, and Grant Johnson stay in. As Here's a pass for Johnson. Tried to tap it in the direction of the rim, and it comes up just a little short. Here's Boldry racing the other way, takes it to the right wing, stops, trying to bounce it off, finds the basketball into the hands of number 12, Braden Hartman. Hartman gives it off to Rentschler, now gets it right back to Brady Hartman as the pass from Boldry is into the hands of Grant Johnson, another steal for the Trojans. Racing the other way is Pitney, right wing, Anderson, three on the way, good. Jordan Anderson, <laughs> it's his fifth three of the contest. Oh, my goodness, it's an offensive smorgasbord out there for Anderson. <laughs> There's another steal. Jarrett Martin in the passing lane. Martin racing the other way, two on two, all the way to the hoop, and a charge oh, against God, Martin. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's a terrible call. He just turns around and barely gets his feet set. Martin makes contact with him. We're going to call him for the charge. 38-4. <clears throat> That's a scoreboard call. Triton stealing it, uh, what, the last five or six possessions down the floor. Anderson's hit about four or five threes already, and Triton is just cruising. As yeah. there's a foul yeah. against the Trojans. Sometimes we don't make smart fouls. That's Zach Pitney just reaching on the ball. and 3.06 to play in the half. Triton leading by 34. That's three on Zach. I, must, I missed one. 
Rands will step to the stripe as that is the seventh team foul against the Trojans. Trying to get cast in their first point of the quarter, and he bricks it badly. Rebound tapped into the hands of Anderson. Wow. Here's Jordan quickly ahead. Outlet pass to Nate Flinner, left wing. Flinner slices in, kicks it out for a Pitney three right wing. Go up. Bam! Posing. Everybody's Zach feeling Pitney. it. 41 to 4. Seven threes in this half for the Trojans. Triton dismantling Caston as there's another steal. Bouldry into the hands of Martin up ahead to Pitney, and he, or excuse me, that's Flinner, just couldn't handle that pass. And it'll go back to Caston. Just through the fingertips of Nate Flinner that time. So Jarrett Martin, Nate Flinner, Zach Pitney, Johnson, and Anderson there's a in the pass lineup. Too tall for Rands right into the waiting arms of Grant, or Jarrett Martin. Baseline pass to Pitney, off to Anderson. Another three on the way, and this one's a little off. That's a push and we've again. Got yes, number foul 12. Foul against Caston. That's number 12, Caston. That'll be Hartman. Triton 41, Caston 4. Ramley, really? Okay. The Triton fans are almost more in awe of what's happening. Well. Not a whole lot of cheering going. I think they're just shocked. This is a completely different effort than we saw the other night. The ball's moving around. The ball's going through the hoop. The defense is incredible. They are just absolutely handing it to Caston here in the first half. 2-10 to play in the half. Triton leading 41-4. to That ball finds Johnson for a layup. Ah, we'll take it. That's four points for Grant Johnson as he finishes down low. That ball was almost a turnover. It was a loose ball bounced right into the hands of Johnson, waiting underneath for a three-point or for a layup. Oh, that didn't go off, Jordy? Okay. No, no, that's all Gavin, e- Gavin Eads going in. Mots and Eads in. Johnson, Johnson and Anderson out. 30. So 43 30, to 4. Yeah, 39 point thump here. And we've got a minute 49 to play in the first half. The Triton is, this is an incredible performance here for the Trojans. Right wing, Zach Pitney has the basketball. Trying to get it into Eads, kicks it off to Martin. Left wing for Flinter, bounced on the baseline to Eads. Hits Mots inside, Mots spins, throws it up, and drew the foul. Brent's going to get a chance to shoot a pair of free throws. There we go. Everybody getting into the game. Here's Mott stepping to the stripe. Bounces it, twirls it. Puts it in the air and got it. There you go, Brent. That's a six foot six senior center. 40 point lead now in the first half for Triton. If you walked into the gym, you may have you may think they accidentally put an extra four on the board, but it is a 44 to 4 lead. Unbelievable start for the Trojans and casting. Uh, likewise, struggling mightily to get anything going. There's wow. a simple turnover on just trying to dribble the basketball as Flinner loses it the other way into the hands of Rensler. Back to back, uh, don't know what happened. Turnovers. Rensler the other way bounces it in the post for Remley. Kicked out left wing, thrown in the post for Rands against Mots. Flips it up, couldn't get it. Rebound to Remley, and he got a layup. He didn't shove him out of the way to get that, did he? 44 to six. Cast him with their first two points of the second quarter. Less than a minute to go in the first half. Here's Flinner left wing with the basketball. Nate holds on to it, bounces it on the baseline for Mott's Trap coming. Mott splits it, flips up a tough shot in the lane, and it Ho-ho! went in. <laughs> Mott said, give me the rock. I'm going. Brent Mott's with three first half points, 46-6. to six. And that was a pretty nice move from Brent on the last play, really. It really was. Here's Remley in the right corner with the basketball. Flips it over the top for Bouldry, nearly intercepted by Martin. Off to Rensler, right wing. Holding on to it against Flinner. Kicks it back to Bouldry. Bouldry takes it to the right wing, directs a little traffic, stops, bounced it off for Rensler. In the post, it comes for Rands. Wraparound pass is out of bounds off the foot of a Trojan down there. It'll go to Caston underneath their own basket. He's trying to drop that ball underneath for Remley. And now he will inbound. Trying to get it in. Kicks it in to Bouldry in the right corner. Off it comes to Wrench. They'll step into a three from the top of the key. Not there. Rebound to Brent Motts. Eight seconds, seven. Flinter got the rock. Flinter across the timeline. Right corner to Eats. Flips it off for a Motts. Oh. Noah Pitney three on the left wing. Good. Wow, at the buzzer. Zach Pitney <laughs> drops a three. Oh, my goodness. Triton heads into the locker room. Leading Caston by 43 points, Bill. Eight 
threes in this contest in the first half. Pitney wasn't open, but the ball's not going to not go in in the first half. Triton was incredible. Well, they missed four shots. I think we missed four shots. Unbelievable. Jordan Anderson leading the way for the Trojans, I believe. But everybody contributing. Uh, they came out clearly upset with their performance against Argus Thursday, and they have taken out their frustrations on casting in this first half. I got Jordy with 19 in the first half. Mason Yo with nine. Jarrett Kraft with four. I got Zach Pitty back-to-back threes. They're looking good. Six, he's got eight. Let me give you the official ones coming from downstream. Yeah, my bad. Jordy's got 19. Mason Yo with 11. Kraft with four. Anderson team high 19, game high 19. Uh, let me see. We've got, I'm just really trying to be polite here, guys. Zach Pitney. We've got three players that have scored more points than the whole team of cast in that half. Uh, free throws were three of four, eight of 11 from three point land. Eight of 11. Jeez. Take it all day long. 19 to 26 from the field. Uh, we have six turnovers to 14 assists. That's a great ratio. And a complete reversal of the season's stat. Yeah, yeah. Caston's got 17 turnovers to one assist. They shot 21%. Ofer, and I mean Ofer from the line, Ofer from three point. Uh, Triton went 8 of 11 from the three point line and shooting 75%, 3 of 4 from the stripe. 43 points, uh, large lead change, zero, tie zero. Longest run is Triton 31 to 2, a 31 to 2 point line. Or a two-point run. Mm. So that's it, folks. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back to the Triton Trojan Sports Network. want to thank all our listeners for tuning in. You're listening to us. Right now we're going to have our chicken toss. We always have it the very last game. Let's see who can throw the ball or the chicken the farthest. These are my ball boys. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. They did an excellent job. They've come to almost all the girls' games, all the boys' games. Let's give them a big hand. They've been an excellent this year. Okay, let's see who this is. Helen Johnson. Who's your favorite ball player? Do you have a girlfriend? No. Okay, girls, she's single. Okay. Jackson Winslow. Jackson, who's your favorite ball player? Hunter Pratt. Hey. Do you have a girlfriend? No. That's not what your mother told you. Going on. So he's single too. Okay. Kobe. Kobe, who's your favorite player? Your dad? Okay. Chad, you, he played a long time ago. I don't know if that means he's older. I am. He is. Okay. You have a girlfriend? I hope okay. Kobe's single. <laughs> Who's your favorite player? My brother. Oh, Trent Howard. Okay. Have you got a girlfriend? No. No? Okay. So we got four single guys out here. Okay, let's start with Evan. Let's see how far you can throw it. Here we go. All right, we're back. I don't, I'm, we just came back because we were asking ourselves some questions. What's the lowest halftime point get or defensive stand for Triton? 
Uh, right now it's at six. I don't remember one smaller than that at the varsity level. Not this season, definitely. I'd be interested to know if we've held anybody to less than six points ever. I don't at know. Half. I wouldn't. It's got to be pretty close. Obviously, there's only six points on the board, but I would, I would tend to say probably not quite. But that was an incredible first half defensively. Although you got to admit, Haston contributed a lot to their own problems there, uh, turning it over as many times as they did. Um, at one point, I think they had a stretch in that second quarter where. They came down expecting to turn the ball over, quite honestly. Yeah, we had 17 turnovers for Caston, and we had 24 points off those turnovers. Well, so many of them were turnovers at half court and runouts. I mean, Caston played about as poorly as they could play, and we played about as well as we could, I think. Right, your points on possession for Triton was a buck point nine, uh, 1.69 to Caston's point two zero. And the truth is, if Caston shoots more, that number's probably even lower for them. It'll uh, be in the negative. They only shot 14 times because they turned it over right. so frequently. Unbelievable. And the shots that they did get up, I mean, they had maybe two or three high percentage looks or good looks in that first half. Uh, just an absolute domination in the first half by your Trojans. Uh, best first half performance they've put together this season. It's on the road, uh, but still not one of the upper echelon opponents we've played this season. But uh, you can only do what you can, you know, you can only beat who you're playing, and they've done a great job. I, know, of that in I the think first half. Th- 31 is our season high for sure in a quarter. 31 points in the second quarter for Triton. Two. Two ah for Caston. Well, hey, we're back at it here in about 30 seconds as the starters are on the floor. Yeah, cast and starters didn't get much run there in the first half. Though. They played uh, most of the first quarter, got yanked at the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter, somewhere in there, Yeah, uh, and didn't see the floor the rest of the way. So those guys will probably be back on the floor, I would think, uh, see if they can get some more energy and effort out of them. About, for cast and perspective now, it's just about trying to win the second quarter because we're sitting up here talking. This game is almost certainly out of reach now for the Comets. I guess crazier things have happened, but it would be an incredible turnaround for them. Oh, unbelievable. And we're back Eight on Eight minutes the on the clock. Bailey gets set to bring it into uh, Kraft, and we're starting. Tick-tock. Both teams have their starting fives on the floor. Kraft across the timeline. Both these groups well-rested. Neither of them saw as much time in the first half as they're used to. As here's Yo left wing, top of the key, it comes to Bailey, right wing to Kraft. Kreft holding on to it, stops, looks for Yo in the cut, and out there gives it to Anderson. Anderson out near midcourt, takes it over to the left wing, hands it off to Kreft, right corner it comes to Mason Yo. Yo drives to the foul line, stops, throws up a floater, got it. Starting it off the right way, Mason Yo. 6 to 51 now. Has 13 points for Yo. Here's Brayton Jellison across the timeline. Gives it off for Kinzer. Triton in that 1-3-1 trap. There's a ball that nearly got away. Jellison saves it to Babb at the foul line. Babb stops. Trapped there. Splits the double team. Throws it up. Short on the runner. Rebound tapped into the hands of Dalton Bailey. Good job of Bailey to contest that one for the Trojans. Here's Yo right wing with the basketball. Top the key to Anderson. Left wing to Kreft. Driving down the baseline. Rips it over for a three-pointer in the right corner by Mason Yo. That splashed home. And Triton started the first, uh, the second half just the way they <laughs> played throughout the first half. Quick timeout for the Comets as Mason Yo opens up on a 5-0 run for the Trojans. 54-6 with 6.48 to go in the third quarter. Um, Triton continuing to play well. Only two possessions there before Coach Evans uh, decides he wants another timeout there. Triton doing a nice job of finding some mismatches there on the offensive end. These are the starters back in for Caston, so I would expect to score to level off some here in the second half. Yeah, and I'm just looking for words to say right now and uh, be positive uh, during this contest. But I'll be honest with you folks, I could about go to sleep. 54-6. to six. Triton, uh, big lopsided. And uh, trying to find some other scores. If you didn't hear the announcement in the first uh, half, Gage Waddle and Malachi Green are the two Trojans that advanced to the semi-state out of the regional in Rochester. Uh, Gage was wrestling for uh, third place. Top four go, so don't know how that finished up. If anybody could shout out, he got third. third. Thank you very much. On a 4 3 decision, so congratulations to Gage. 54 6, back to action here. 
As Howard throws it in in the backcourt for Kinzer, he'll bring it across against Kreft. 1-3-1, one, one, maybe a man in there now for the Trojans. Says here's a trap. Anderson going to be called for the fouls. He reached in. Mm-hmm. Jordy getting called for his second foul. We haven't seen that a lot. Triton's been aggressive defensively, but not over aggressively. Did a really nice job finding a balance there in the first half. Oh, that one against Jarrett Kreft, his first. My bad. Thought it was against Anderson, surely, but Kreft nailed with it. He thought it was, too. There's Jellison in the lane, kicking it out the bab left wing. He splits inside, flipped it up, and had it blocked. That was all ball. Foul going to go against Dalton Bailey. No, no, that was all ball. Wow, I don't think Coach liked that. When even at 54 6, we didn't like that. Dalton Bailey did a great job there. He just got, you know, it's three fouls on him, three send, fouls on Zach Pitney. Send Hunter Babb to the line for Caston, and his first go. one is good. Babb hits the first. They have seven. Second shot for Babb is in the air and good as well. Got them both. 54 to 8, Caston on the scoreboard here in the second half now. Full court press being picked up by the Comets. Here's Bailey kicking it off to Anderson. Anderson flips it back to Bailey. Triton struggling to get it across a little bit. We're okay. Anderson across the timeline now and gives it right wing for Kreft. Back to Anderson. Wide open for three in the right corner. Not there. Rebound away on the weak side for Dalton Bailey. Bailey kicks it back to Kreft and Triton going to get a reset. Nice job for Dalton Bailey there on the weak side to stay active. Here's Mason Yo top of the key with the basketball. Yo drives to the foul line, stops, pivots, hands it off to Anderson top of the key. <laughs> I think Jordy wanted that one. He's got five threes in the contest Here's in the Bailey. first half. Bailey in the right corner, gives it off to Kreft, right wing. Kreft pulls it out, finds Grant Johnson top of the key for a three-pointer. Short, long rebound, knocked out of bounds That's by ball, Howard. Blue ball. Good hustle for Grant to try to get out there and grab that ball. Using them long legs, him and Jordan Anderson both. It was off his miss, so I think he was on his horse there trying yeah. to get to that one. Yeah. Here's Bailey with the basketball. Bounces it into Yo on the left wing. Flips it to Bailey. Top the key now to Kreft. Kreft out near midcourt. Just holding on to it. Triton leading 54-8. to 5.30 to go in the third quarter. Here's Yo out near midcourt. Right wing it comes to Kreft. Kreft drives in to the foul line. Stops. Throws it to Yo. Wide open for a layup. Backdoor deuce. 56-8. to eight. As Triton now leads by 48. Across the timeline, Douglas throws it in for Babb. Left corner, it comes for Howard. Howard flipped it back out for Kinzer. Kinzer with a trap coming, flips it back to Howard on the left wing. Cross courts it for Douglas. Nice catch for Douglas. That pass nearly sailed through his hands. Right corner is Jellison. Top the key, Kinzer will try a three. In and out, no good. Rebound, Grant Johnson had it and was yeah. fouled by Babb. Babb trying to rip that one away, commits the personal. First against Caston in the half. Fourth of the game, unless I miss some tick marks. First whistled against Babb. As Kreft brings it across in the center of the floor, goes right wing for Mason Yo. Yo holds on to it there, drives down the baseline. Nice move inside. His runner drops home, and it's 58-8. to eight. Mason Yell playing a great game offensively here. He sure is. Pitney set to go in. Martin set to go in. Here's Kinzer on the right side. Hunter set to go in, getting instructions from Coach Groves. To Douglas in the corner. Kicked it out to Babb just inside the arc right side. Off it comes now for Kinzer to Douglas for a three right wing. Barely drew iron. Tapped around into the hands of Anderson. Jordan will push for the Trojans. Look at him. Jordan bounces it to Yo on his way to the hoop, and he laid it in. Great bounce by Anderson. 60 to 8 for Triton. Brent Knotts coming into the scorer's table now. Howard's pass is deflected, and a fight for it ensues, and we've got a jump. Grant Johnson tied up with Babb. Like yeah, Jack. Caston didn't like the fact that he was laying on his back a little bit, and I was kind of surprised myself. Uh, okay. Here's line change line for change. Triton as everybody comes in and everybody goes out. Full line change for the Trojans. Gavin Eads, Brent Mott, Zach Pitney, Nate Flinner, and Jarrett Martin into the contest for the Trojans. Just under four minutes to play in the third quarter. Triton leading 60-8. to eight. Not a joke. Bab across the timeline. Off it comes for Kinzer right wing. Kinzer working against the trap of Flinner and Martin up top. Kinzer bounces it through to Jellison left wing. Long three on the way short. 
Rebound tapped into the hands of Howard. He goes right back up and was fouled by Mott. <laughs> Well, Mott's getting a little anxious there. Is this first foul? Yeah, that's a case. Mott needs to move the feet, not the hands there. 60 to 8 as Howard heads to the stripe, trying to get Caston into double figures. Howard's in the air and good. 60 to 9. The Trojans have a little huddle there. Now they'll break, and the ball will be bounced into the hands of Howard. One more coming. Howard's in the air and good. Got them both. It's 60 to 10. Here's Pitney with the basketball out of bounds underneath his own hoop. Gets it in for Nate Flinner. Flinner ahead to Martin. Martin dribbling through some traffic. Brings it across the timeline. Drives down the lane. Bounced it for Mott's. A little jumper on the way is off the mark. Well off the mark, in fact. And Howard gathers the rebound for the Comets. Across the timeline quickly is Babb. Brings it right corner for Kinzer. Kinzer pulls it out. Drives in. Stops. Hands it off to Babb, and he'll center the basketball for Caston. Caston going to get a little reset here offensively. It's bounced over to Kinzer, back to Babb. Babb drops it off in the post, cross-courted in the right corner for Douglas. Off now to Kinzer. Kinzer flips it to Babb in the left corner for Jellison. Three, no good. Rebound into the hands of Brent Motts. Best look Caston's gotten a while. Brayton Jellison wide open for three, couldn't get it to drop, and it remains 60-10. to 10. Here's Flenner right wing, bouncing it out to Pitney. 2.45 to play in the third quarter as Eads has the basketball left wing. Works around a screen for Mott's, takes it top of the key, stops, hands it off to Pitney right wing. Pitney driving in, kicks it out for an Eads three left wing. Not there. Rebound, Jarrett Martin has it for Triton. Martin splits into the lane, kicks it out for Pitney. He'll try a three from the same spot, and his drops in. 63-10, to 10, Triton by 53. Third three for Pitney. There you go, Zach having a nice shooting night. Or afternoon, I guess. Maybe try to play in the afternoon more often. 63-10. to 10, Demolishing cast into this stage of the contest. As running in, there's a charge going to be whistled against Hunter Bat. Ah, oh, man. I'll tell you what. Brett Moss just standing in there taking one in the chest. It's the correct call. I thought the score might switch the call, but the official 60, stayed with it. 63-10, to 10 and we'll take it. Brett Moss standing in there taking one. Here's Jarrett Martin with the basketball. Martin will walk it up slowly, brings it across the timeline, bounces it in the post for Mott. Mott's at the elbow, oh. tried to feed the cutting Flenner, thrown away into the hands of Babb, who spins across the timeline, nearly lost the ball, and saves it off out to Douglas to set up some offense. Here's Kinzer over to Howard, left wing in the baseline. This comes for Jellison. His pass is deflected out of bounds by Pitney. It'll what? stay with Cast. Now we got a foul. Pitney with oh, the reach. Oh, jeez, that's his fourth foul, too. Pitney called for the reach. As here's no, Jellison. No, they got him for three. All right. I thought he had three before as well. I did too. As there's a shot off the mark from long range for Kinzer. And now brought across by Jarrett Martin after the rebound by Gavin Eads. Left wing, Pitney had it poked out of bounds. Quick hands by Jellison. Why do I have him for three already? I, I, thought, really- I thought he had three in the first two. Could have swore they flashed that across the scoreboard. That's two. They got him for two in the first half, so. Scoreboard was off then. They, yeah, they had scoreboard him. was off. They had him for three. Here's Flinner left wing. They must have corrected it during half there. As Martin spins inside, kicks it out for Pitney. Three on the way, right wing. Nope. Not there. Rebound tapped around. Jellison's got it for Caston, looking to push the other way against Gavin Eads. And bounced it off his own foot, I thought, and he did. Triton basketball. Eads doing a nice job. To That's a good sell for Eads. If it went off of Eads, he sold that well. I, think, I couldn't tell. I think Eads caused just enough pressure there. Jellison bounced it off his own foot. I think it was the correct call. He had a pretty decent angle on it. Yeah, and the official's not going to kick that call. Less than a minute to go here in the third. Triton with the basketball. Here's Flenner stepping into a left corner three, and he buried it. <laughs> Nathan Flunner from downtown. 66 to 10. Right wing with the basketball. It's Hunter Babb. Flips it all the way over across for Eli Douglas. Douglas centers it and gives it back to Babb. Clock rolls down to 30 seconds. Back to Douglas left wing. Douglas back to Babb. Babb drives to the foul line and gives it to Douglas once again. 
Back to Babb. Those two playing a two-man game out front as Babb spins in the lane, kicks it for a jealous and three right wing. Short rebound into the hands of Rentschler, who's back in. His pass out is stolen away by Jared Martin. Martin racing the other way, bounces it to Flenner, up and in. Flenner does a great job catching that ball. I think that pass was intended for Pitney. It was. Pitney didn't know. He was too Flenner quick. doing a great job to pick that up and score it as Babs heave is off the mark at the buzzer. I'm going to tell you, they got a rare, ultra rare offensive rebound here. When they went to kick it out, they turned it over. Mm-hmm. So, That's the, uh, been the way it's went here for Caston Day. Folks, 68-10. Uh, to 10. I promise you, this is Caston is not this bad. Triton is absolutely just dominating this contest. 68-10. to 10. Uh Easily their best showing through three quarters this season, regardless of the competition. Yes, 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 ab- yes, absolutely. When you're hitting shots like we're hitting shots. And they're they're aggressive on both ends of the floor. They're yep. flying around. Defensively, we are just in your grill. There's a team will and competitive spirit that's there that we haven't seen in a little while uh, from the Trojans. We kind of saw it come out during the bi-county. Starters, semi-starters back in. Few of them, it looks like. Looks like Kreft, uh, Yo, and Johnson. I thought we'd be going the other way on the bench. Groves has got a few more down there. I really did. I thought he'd have sent a couple, like a uh, couple kids in the locker room to get suited up. But, like, obviously, you can't do that. But. No, but he's got Stevens, Hensley, and uh, Stickter on the bench yet. I'm guessing those guys will see time here in this fourth quarter. Eight minutes to go, and Triton leads by 58. Well, I'm not going to say it, but you got eight minutes to go for your 200th win. Yep. And you're up a pile. 58. A pile. <laughs> Caston made that math easy by getting to 10. <laughs> I didn't want to say 58, man. I just wanted to say a pile. <laughs> <laughs> Credit the Caston fans. They've stuck around. They are. Well, what else are you going to do on a Saturday afternoon? I guess not much. There's a pass. Oh. Sailing oh out of bounds. Yo out, was extremely. out into the breezeway. Bouncing out into the parking lot. Yo was extremely wide open underneath. Kreff couldn't quite get that pass to him. Almost tried a little hard to. Well, you may not see Jordan uh, Jordan Anderson the rest of the game, but that young man could have hit a three from the parking lot this morning. <laughs> I'm telling you what, he did not miss. He just Here's excellent the- shooting exhibition by Jordy Anderson. Bab right wing. He had his pass stolen. It's Gavin Eads racing the other way. One on one. Throws it up and in. Bam, with the Gavin left hand. Eads. Yes, left side, left hand. Big fan of that play up here in the booth. Here's Douglas racing in, and he got Whoa. it to drop. Congratulations. Kreft nearly dribbled it out of bounds. <laughs> Brings it, saves it back. And we'll set up some offense for the Trojans. Right wing is Mason Yo. Yo driving down the baseline, throws it up, missed it, but threw the foul. And we'll see. Did they put that on the floor? I'm uh, going to say yes. Yeah, it's on the floor. Hunter Babb picking up his third personal. Here's Kreft directing a little traffic, trying to get it in. Closing in on five and somehow flips it into Johnson in time. Here's Yo right wing to Kreft. Kreft holding on to it over there against Douglas. Stops, kicks it out to Yo, top of the key. Yo steps back, thought about three, rips it over to Eads on the baseline. Gavin gives it right back to Mason, left wing. Yo working against Jellison, feeds it inside for Johnson. Johnson hits the cutting Kreft. Kreft stops, pivots in the lane, nearly lost his balance, nope, shovels nope. it back to Johnson, back to Yo. Right wing for Pitney. Pitney down the baseline for the Trojans. Stops, throws it up, had it blocked, got it back, puts it up and scores. Wow, I don't know how he put that in from that side, but he sure did. Zach Pitney, great job there. Good job to stick with it there for Zach. Had that first shot blocked, 72-12. to 12. Triton leading by 60. Left wing, there's a three in and out, no good for Rentschler. And Grant Johnson has the rebound. That, one, that one's getting closer. Here's Eads left wing all the way across for a yo three. Not there, rebound tapped around. Pitney has it for Triton. Zach back up, missed it, oh. but drew the foul. Two shots coming up for Zach. 72-12, to 12. Triton in front with 6-11 to play as here comes Remley back to the game for Caston. Kinzer at the scorer's table now as well. Zach is in the air and no good in and out. Well, I tell you what, if there's a low light on this game, it's going to be free throw shooting. I could have called that any time. Just about, yeah. Not a good free throw shooting team, are we? 
We're shooting 61.3 from the uh, from the line as a team. Zach short on the second one. Missed them both. both. Johnson trying to save that rebound and saves it into the hands of Kinzer, who just checked in. And he'll bring it across for Cast. And Kinzer working against Kreft. Goes right wing with it for Douglas. Douglas centers the basketball. Finds Wrench to the right wing. In the right corner, it comes to Kinzer. Back around the horn we go. Left wing to Trenton Howard. Howard working against Eats. Drives down the baseline. Stops and rips it back out. Reversed around, it comes right wing for Kinzer. Holds it up high against Kreft. Flips it off for Remley. Left corner, it comes to Douglas. 5.40 to play in the contest. Baseline, there's a shot on the way and missed. Underneath by Kinzer. Johnson has the rebound. Flips it ahead to Yo, who brings it across. Mason with the basketball. Finds Johnson. Right wing to Kreft. In the corner to Pitney. 5.25 to play. Pitney flips it top. The key for Yo. Yo slashes in. Kicks it out. Off to Eads. Eads thought about three. Passed it up. Anybody in, anybody in the game is thinking about a three right now if they're wearing blue. Here's the pass inside for Grant Johnson against Remley. Goes up and in. Nice job. Grant Johnson making a shot. Nice job. Six for points Johnson. for that young man. Created we're gonna get a, a we're gonna get a, a little homogenized down there with our uh, lineup. Yeah, mixing some starters and subs. But we're Anderson. getting a five. We're gonna get a five man line change here. Anderson's at the scorer's table. Has Wrenchler's wow. fouled by Yo. A little okay. bump against Yo. He saw the subs going to the bench. Here we go. It's five for two. Five blue and two whites. Well, Into the see. contest right now for the Trojans. Brent Motts, ba- Bailey, uh, Jarrett Martin, Jordan Anderson, and Nathan Flunner. There's a ball bounced into Jellison. Right wing three is short. Rebound tapped around and it's picked up by Martin underneath. He'll race the other way. Martin driving down the baseline. Throws it out to Anderson. Three on the wing from the left wing is short. Rebound tapped out of bounds. It'll belong to Caston. It's a good looking shot. Jordy's got one to warm up with now. We can just start hitting it. We we'll probably hit the next set. So yeah, he's been on the bench for a while. <laughs> yeah, got to warm up somehow. Triton in front, 74 to 12. As the ball's brought across and given to Rentschler, right wing. Stops, kicks it underneath for Jellison, who goes up strong and got it to drop. Tried to get the contact, wasn't there. Who hit that? Re- um, who was that? <laughs> I got to think about Jellison. Jellison. As Anderson slices say, in, missed the layup, and the rebound away to Rentschler. Quickly across the timeline, it comes to Remley on the outlet pass. Rips it to Jellison left wing. Jellison steps into a three, not there, and the rebound away to Jordan Anderson. Just seems like it's been a bad look kind of day for Jellison. He's gotten some decent looks. Really good looks. He's got a nice shooting stroke, just hasn't been able to get him to drop. Yep, rattle him in. Left wing with the basketball is Nate Flinner. 3.45 to play in the contest. As the ball comes off to Jarrett Martin, now to Dalton Bailey, right wing. Bailey holds on to it. Five count. Dribbles it to the top of the key. Slides it off for Anderson. Anderson slicing in. Dumps it for Mott, but he traveled. Okay. There we go. There we go. Dylan Hensley checking with the contest. Along with uh, Gavin Eads. Jordy's out. Bailey's out. Here's Jellison, left wing with the basketball. Pushes off, throws up a three, not there. Rebound away to Brent Motts. Loose ball inside, I should say. Motts lost the handle on it. Comes away, Jellison fighting inside. Throws it up and drew the foul. And it's going to be a two-shot foul, folks. That foul's on number 34, Dylan Hensley, getting his first foul. He's warmed up. Hensley, Eads, Mots, Flenner, and Martin for Triton as Jellison's tough shooting night continues. Or afternoon as that one rattles out. Bricked it. Didn't get it. Big goose Second egg. one is rattled in. There we go. 74-15. <clears throat> Here's Gavin Eads with the basketball. They're going to bring on that full-court press. That's I, I like the idea. There's no point in not throwing everything at Triton here. At least you get better at it, maybe, as Martin goes down the lane and got nice a runner to drop. Floater. How you like me now? 
Martin hasn't got much of a chance to play this season. He's a pretty nope. good athlete for the Trojans. I think next season maybe he goes the Anderson route and gets moved off the point in his last season. Giving it up to Flunner. Flunner with a steal. He's going coast for Hold two. It. Nate Flunner gets his seventh point. And Rentschler lost it out of bounds. Good pressure from Martin. I like the way he didn't give up on the ball. Hey, if you missed it, it's 78-15 here. You woke up from your nap. That's true, 78-15. to 15. Yeah, here's Martin across the time. It's been a strange game. It's been a Saturday wow. afternoon clobbering. It has been. Hensley with the basketball top of the key. Hands it off for Gavin Eats. 2.20 to play. Right wing it comes for Nate Flenner. Flenner holds on to it over there. Holds on against Douglas, dribbles down the baseline, throws it all the way across for Eats, kicked off to Martin. Martin slashes in the lane, throws up a runner, airballed it, rebound, saved by Hensley as he knocks Excellent it off Jellison. Excellent job. I tell you, oh, Jellison comes in and just shoves Brent Mott's out of the way, and he should have just went for the ball. I'm like, <laughs> Hensley doing a nice job using the baseball. Flinner going to get a big rest there. Martin getting a big rest. Back into the contest for the Trojans is... Adam Stevens and Drew Stichter. That's right. Adam Stevens and Drew Stichter into the varsity contest. Here's Gavin Eads in the left corner with the basketball. Eads takes it into the lane, kicks it out to Stichter, right wing for Stevens. Back it comes to Eads, left wing to Stichter. Minute 55 to play as that pass from Stichter go. got away from him, but it's knocked out of bounds by casting. Hensley doing a good job manning up down there on uh, number 22 there, uh, Rensler, the 6'3 junior. Here's Stevens out near midcourt with the basketball. Left wing to Stichter. Stichter kicks it off to Eads' right wing. Eads stops, kicks it in the right corner for Stevens. Bounced on the baseline for Mott's. Mott's spinning, working through traffic. Finds Eads for a three left corner. Not there, in and out. Rebound chased down by Stichter. Kicked out to Stevens for a three top of the key. A Not heavy, there. A little heavy. Hensley knocked that one into the hands of cast and that long lead pass is ran down by Douglas in the corner kicked it to Jellison Jellison slashes in dumped it off for Howard Howard goes up strong yeah. and drew the foul two shots coming up for him that's on Hensley again I think or maybe he's going to ring Mott's up I don't know let's check it out yeah give it to Mott's should have went on Hensley that's all right 118 to play as Howard steps to the stripe Mott's and Hensley both laughing at each other it was a pick em. At the stripe, there's 20. In and out, no good. I, I don't. This is, wow. Unbelievable. Got to cherish the possession. Second one for Howard's on the way in. Good. Got to cherish the possession. Here's Rands into the contest for Howard. 78 to 16, Triton in front. Just trying to work the clock down to zero here. Here's Stichter with the basketball. Brings it across to the left side of the floor. Kicks it in the center for Eads. Good catch by Eads. Kicked out to Stevens in the right corner. He drives down the baseline. Stops. Throws it out for Eads. Top of the key for a Hensley three. That's not there. Rebound tapped around. Mott's nearly had it. Saved it off to Hensley. Kicked out Stevens for a three. Not there. And finally taken away by Jellison. Brayton will push it the other way for Caston. Into the lane. Throws it up. Got the roll. Good no call there inside. And it goes down. 45 seconds to go here in this contest. We're just about done, ladies and gentlemen. Jason Groves is going to get us 200th win. Two, Aston trying real hard for 20 points here. 200. Might be his largest victory yeah, we got to check on some uh, records here. There's Mott's in the lane, and he scores. Mott's going to the rack. 80 to 18. Brent Mott's down there getting jiggy with it. There's Jellison dropping it off on the baseline, but a foul going to be called. And one and one coming up for Jellison. 18.4 to go here. That foul was on number 30, his second, Brent Mott's. Jellison is good. One more coming for him as he tries to notch point number 20 here for the Comets. It is good as well. They've there got you 20, go. 80 to 20. As a couple of substitutions into the game for Caston, Jellison comes uh, out. Boy, I tell you. Remley is in. Tough to be a fan today. 
just like the other day for us. Adam Stevens will walk it up. I don't know if I've heard of Jim this quiet, though. No, it is quiet. I mean, you got the young elementary kids over the there Triton hollering fans, and screaming. The Triton fans are so far ahead that they don't want to cheer. Right. And the Caston fans have been so thoroughly dominated, they haven't cheered most of the game either. Triton wins 80-20 um, to 20 well, as the final Caston's second got more, kicks Caston's off. Caston's got more cheerleaders here than they got fans uh, from the high school, it looked like. I didn't see many high school kids here. Most of them were just... Uh, Look at like ten kids over there. It's really it's pretty hard to put into words what we just witnessed, honestly. Yeah, eighty to twenty. Uh, Triton just stomps casting at casting, uh, really taking out some anger and frustration after a really tough loss against Argus. I really think uh, any other night, any other game, uh, casting probably able to keep it a lot a lot closer. But they ran into a buzz saw. Triton uh, came out, played angry throughout, stayed focused, which is one of the biggest things. Uh, that you'll see in a blowout like this. A team does not take their foot off the gas. Triton stayed focused on both ends of the floor, and they just continue to run that lead up higher and higher. Uh, and Caston, even when the subs came in, not a lot of drop-off. Everybody on the team was pretty angry after that game against Argus, and uh, probably the best complete team performance, regardless of competition we've seen this season uh, from the Trojans. Yeah, and I'd love to get Jason up here just to talk to him a little bit about his 200th win and just congratulate him on that milestone. Um, I, I think I've seen every game, just about every game he's played. Coached, yeah. Or coached, yeah. I think I've seen quite a – might have had a few that I didn't, but, uh, boy, I tell you, it's – It's been a fun ride. It has been an excellent ride for number 200 for Jason. Uh, lowest uh, quarter out get was a 12. Fourth quarter, we put 12 on. They put 10. That was their best of the contest. Uh, run it down, Jarrett Martin with two, Nate Flinter with seven, Jarrett Kreff with four, uh, Jordan Anderson with 19, Zach Pitney 13, Brent Motts five, Eads with two, Johnson with six, and a game high, team high, 22 goes to Mason Yo for the Comets. Uh, Jellison had nine, Howard with five, Rimley with a deuce, Bab with a deuce, and Douglas with a deuce. Oh, most of those points coming there in the fourth period. Fourth quarter for them. Uh, we can give, you want to see the ugliness, here it is. We had 10 turnovers to 20 assists. What a ratio. Love that. Had 23 turnovers to one assist. Kasten. Uh, not going to like that. Points off turnover, we had 33. Caston had 5. Caston was 6 of 31 from the field. Triton, 33 of 54. Triton making more from the field than the other team shoots. Uh, Hard to not see. Not hard to see how the, the score is that lopsided, unfortunately. Triton scoring 80 points. Don't remember the last time we scored 80. Don't remember the last time we held a team to 6 points. In a half, in a margin of victory of uh, 60 points, which obviously will help uh, when you look at things, but we know the deal here today. Uh, Jordan Anderson shooting uh, 7 of 8. I'm sorry. Jordan Anderson shot 5 of 9 from three-point land, 7 of 13. Mason Yo. He was 9 of 12 overall, 2 of 4 from the three, free, uh, from the three point land. We had 11 of 24. We, sh- we made 11 threes. Don't know how many times we've made more than 10 threes in a contest. Uh, just an excellent job. Shooting from the field at 61%. Uh, still, free throws. We shot six free throws, 3 of 6, 50%. Under our, uh, under our team uh, average. So if I'm looking at anything, I mean, really you got to hit your free throws coming down the stripe. Doesn't matter in this game, but when you need them in a game, that's when you got to do it. So, and Caston shooting 8 of 11, and their free throw 72.7. They were 0 for 14, folks. 0 for 14 from the three-point land, and they were 6 of 31 on 6 of 19%. I hate to give that stat, but wow. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I don't know how you talk about it. There was a there was a stretch in the first half where I think Triton forgot how to miss, uh, and Caston forgot how to not turn the basketball over. I mean, right. one of the games that both teams were completely 
opposite of what the other one was doing. Triton was playing incredibly. Uh, Cast was probably playing their worst game they've played in years. Um, and the Triton rolls to an easy victory here. Right, absolutely. Don't know if I can get Jason up here or not. I'm trying to. Yeah, I haven't either. Really like to get him up here and talk to him just a touch. Uh, hats off to the guy picking up his 200th victory. In yeah, a, in, a, in his 11th year, he is the he has the highest win percentage of any coach in the state of Indiana at 76 percent. For uh, who's got the most wins in Triton history? He does. There you go. He's the, got the highest wins. Been to four state title games, won once. Uh, you know, it's been a complete renaissance since he took over the program. Things not like we were a terrible team, but he completely took this team to the next level. This uh, program, I should say, to the next level. Uh, it's just been a joy to watch for Triton fans, and I know they've uh, we've enjoyed every game of it that we can get out of him. Um, he's he's just incredible, and he's really put Triton on the map in a much different way than we had been. And obviously, we love that. Yeah, I tell you, I'd really like to. Uh Boy, when you think about it, he won a couple. He went 25-2. and two. I mean, when you look at his seasons that he had, he does a great job moving the chess pieces on the floor, doesn't he? Always gets the most out of what he's got. I love his matchups that he has out there. I think, uh, you know, he's not perfect. He, he, there's some matchups that don't work, but he, he's able to make the adjustments. And then the kids got to perform as well. And I think year in and year out, you got kids that are willing to just go to the mat for Jason and uh, do everything they can for their coach because they know their coach cares. And, and like we've said, and I, I've said this for years, you know, winning isn't everything, but if it wasn't important, we wouldn't keep score. You know, I'm not a big participation guy. I don't like participation trophies. I really don't like them, and if you ask me how I feel about them, I'll tell you. You just uh, did. <laughs> bottom line is, you know, participation trophies are for guys that just didn't win. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say losers because if you're competing, you're never a loser. You're never a loser if you're competing. If you're out there trying, if you're in the stands criticizing those that are competing, you know, to me, you're the loser. And I played four years of football for Triton. I did track for a couple, three three years. Never really had any opportunity to win anything. But I know I went out there each time and I competed the best way that I could. And it's great to see the success that Triton Athletics has had here in the last 10 to 15 years. And it's been a lot. Not that we haven't had success in the past, but I tell you, Parents are a big part of it, and understanding the academics of the game and what it takes, you got to be in the class. Hard classroom work allows you to come out and compete at the highest level. I believe that. You've got to have passing grades to play, and if that's not a motivator, I don't know what is. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things Jason's done uh, since he's been here, the reason Triton doesn't have the down years necessarily like they had in the past, uh, his player uh, development's incredible. Some of these guys that come in as freshmen for him, they don't have any idea what they're doing. Completely lost out there. And by the time they're seniors, they're competent uh, role players for him and guys that can step in and make big plays or even play long stretches of minutes and turn themselves into go-to guys. Uh, and, and that's really incredible. And it speaks to not only the way the kids have dedicated themselves to him, uh, but the way he's dedicated himself to them and uh, the way they've been able to develop over the years. Uh, you know, and just not have those down years like you've had in the past. The down years, I mean, how many times has he been under 500 after his first couple of years? I don't think he has. It's just been incredible. Right, agreed. And he likes to win. He, you know, he come out of the John Glenn program, out of the Gordon Mawson program. And, uh, you know, Coach Coach Mawson's been doing this a lot of years. He's got over 300 wins. Uh, definitely he'll – I'm, I'm but almost guarantee you that Gordon's going to turn Argus around and make them as competitive as Jason has made Triton. And it's going to be a, a year-in, year-out battle as long as Gordon and Jason want to go at it, they can do it. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that I don't think that that kinship, that uh, friendship, that relationship is ever going to end as long as we're playing that close to each other. So, yeah, looking ahead for Triton, I think uh, this is the next game we got. We have on the next contest. Had it early. I lost it. You did. You did have it early. Yep. Someone's going to tweet Home against here. LaVille uh, oh, February 12th, which that, is next Thursday, I want to say. Yeah. Next Friday. 
Yep. Friday, home next Friday against LaVille <laughs> in a contest that we saw in the Bi-County Championship when Triton uh, rolled to one of their most impressive wins in a while. Uh, yeah, against a good LaVille team. Yeah, against a good LaVille team, of course, uh, under Michael Edison. They've been improving since then, and you know they're going to come in and give us a battle. Right. Uh, so we'll be for there for that. Hope you'll tune in to join us. Right, and then it doesn't get easy for us. I mean, we got, we're got we at Rochester, at Valley, at Bremen, and then we're home to round out conference play in uh, against Knox. Look at a conference. Right now you got Winnemac at 6 and 0, Pioneer 4 and 1, Culver 5 and 2, Laville's 4 and 2. We're in the middle at 3 and 2. Yeah, nice conference win. Picked up the conference win we today. We did pick we up didn't God, be 4 and 2. I'm sorry, 4 and 2. Caston's 2 and 3. Knox has uh, got one win. West Central is one at North Judson's a big goose egg in the conference. Hasn't won one yet and they played 7 games. So um just looking at that and just thinking, wow. Uh, obviously, there's no chance of us winning the conference in boys basketball at this point. So you're going to set your eyes on the next game, which is the next game and the next game. And then you're going to look at the, uh, obviously, the tournament. You're going to go out there and you're going to, okay, well, let's see what we can do here as we get closer to sectional time and what adjustments can we make. And coaches are going to get down and they're going to look at some tape and they're going to try to find out what mistakes were made and how to correct those mistakes. They're going to fix what's broke. And they're going to do a great job. You know, hats off to Matt Landis, Steve Duff, uh, helping out in the program and doing what they do. Coaches out of the locker room. Blake Shorey's out there helping out too as well. Our sectionals, you know, you're looking at Argus, South Central, Culver, Triton, Oregon Davis, and North Miami. So it's kind of a, meh, what you could almost call that this year potentially one of the weaker sectionals when you look at South Central's at 10-7. and 7, Culver's at 11 and four. Triton's at 11 and uh, 12 and six now, but OD's at eight and ten. North Miami won one game, uh, looks like, and then Argus is overall nine and eight. So right at a 500, uh, right at a 500 season. I'll tell you one thing: it's going to be a hyper competitive sectional. Uh, everybody in there uh, are 100 percent effort type teams. Uh, minus maybe North Miami, who's really struggling this season at 1-15. and 15. So right. I think Triton's going to get everything they want. Luckily, it's on the home floor. Maybe that helps us out. Right. Got Coach Groves coming up here now. Jason, uh, going to give us a couple minutes here. He's got a big smile on his face. I know i got a smile on my face. So 12-5 and five here on the season. Coach Groves, how you doing? Pretty good right now. All right, sir. We want to say <laughs> congratulations on your 200th win. Thank you. That's an awesome milestone. Uh, you have a win percentage of about uh, 76%. And if, when I look at it, uh, that's the highest in the state right now. Well, I've been I've been blessed with a lot of good players throughout the years. That's that's all that says. I mean, I, you look back and you know think of some of the guys we had, including your son. And you know, we've I've really been blessed with a lot of good kids. And you know, this group's no different. I mean, they're. They're a bunch of good kids and just, you know, <laughs> just up and down, <laughs> just the consistency part. But well, we'd, like to, we'd like to level that off a little bit, Coach, but I know sometimes it happens with kids, they go up and down. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, everybody got in tonight, everybody played tonight, everyone contributed tonight in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Mason Yo with 22, Jordy with 19, he was on fire. He could have hit a three from the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, one thing we talked to, and I talked about Mason – you know, he, he wasn't very aggressive, I didn't think, in the Argus game. I said, you, you know, you got to come out and be aggressive. I mean, you, you got to play basketball. You're going to make mistakes, but you're so much better when you're aggressive. And, you know, that's the thing I liked about Mason tonight. He came out, he was aggressive. He was aggressive off the dribble. You know, he was, he was looking for a shot. Um, you know, and same with Jordan. You know, Jordan came out and, I think, you know, was frustrated, you know, with his performance against Argus. And so, you know, the kids were really focused. I think they played with a chip on their shoulder today. And, unfortunately, you know, Caston was on the other end of that. So, um, you know, I, coming in, I, to be honest with you, I was I was nervous. I mean, they they played Northfield. That Northfield was fifty six, fifty three, something like that. And they shot the ball extremely well. Right. Um, you know, so I, coming in, I was nervous. And then you know, I told the kids that just this just proves, you know, basketball's ninety eight percent from the shoulders up. It's it's mental. You guys think you're good, and, you know, and play like you're good. You are good, and that, that's what it takes. And then I thought we did that today. And you know, you guys can play this way against good teams too. You just got to believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah, 10, tw- 10 turnovers to 20 assists, Coach. That's, that's what it says here. You had 20 assists with 10 turnovers. I'm like, that's nice. Yeah, and that's why I, I talked to, even to Jordan about, you know, the other game against Argus. Um, you know, he didn't have – he had, I'm not sure how many points, three or five, something like that. 
and but he didn't have any assists. He didn't have any rebounds. And I said, well, you know, teams are going to look to take you away when you're not scoring. You know, look to look to make your teammates better. You know, be a, become a passer and, and get other people open. And tonight, I think he had. Uh, you know, I'm not sure he might have had five assists or something. You know, he had he had so, at least more than zero. I know that. Okay. Um, but you know, so, so I think our kids are getting better with that. They're trying to get each other open and get right. each other shots, and that's what it takes. It was a lot of unselfish ball on both ends, and I just uh, even the JV contest was that the way. A lot of passing, a lot of moving the ball. I liked the ball movement tonight. I thought the kids were crisp. They were paying attention. They were looked focused. Like you said, they were paying attention. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I said. You know, they, they played with a chip on their shoulder today, and it was, you know, they came out with a focus that, you know, they, they were upset how we played. You know, and a lot of it, you know, give Argus credit. They, they played well and did some nice things, but you know, our kids know they were up. They were disappointed with with the way they performed, and and you know, Coach Landis asked me on the bench, why can't we do this every time? And you know, I said, well, if I knew that, I, <laughs> I'd be a rich man. That's um, right. But you know, it's just it's just you know, kids. They're kids and. We're up and down, and that's been our, our issue this year. You know, we've been up and down. We haven't been consistent, and so, you know, we're still striving for that. But, you know, like I told them, you know, this is a good step in the right direction, and, you know, let's just keep getting better from here and, and, and you know, finish out the season strong. Great. Well, Coach, we appreciate you stopping by. Congratulations on win number 200. Thank you. Looking forward to 201 against LaVille. Yeah. Me so too. <laughs> that'll be a great contest. So we'll have everybody out for that. Yeah, hopefully. It'll, it'll be fun. You know, I guarantee they'll be ready to go. It won't, won't be, you know, the same, you know, margin of victory i don't think this time man Probably obviously not. <laughs> they will have them ready to go and and uh it'll be a fun game though you know that you know we're used to this game really you know being a, a deciding factor in the conference you know not so much this year but you know it'll still be a good good experience for us and a good, good test good test anytime we play someone in marshall county it seems to be just uh <laughs> that's true that is it's true. tough it's hard nosed and it's fun yeah everybody so. knows each other so well coaches do and knows mm-hmm. what each other's going to do and we've been coaching each other for so long that you know they know what they want to do against the other team, and it's just it's just tough. It's it's um, you know it kind of reminds me of like the Big Ten Conference or something when you're coaching against the same guys you know twice a year, right. you know year in and year out. They get used to each other, and that's why it's so hard to win on on the road in the Big Ten. You know, and so um, you know I was proud of our guys though. This is a great game. Yeah, it was a great game, Coach. Thanks a lot, and uh, good luck along the All way. Right, thanks, Bill. Thanks, guys. Win number two hundred for Jason Groves here at Triton High School. And uh, big, big hats off. I know someone's going to get him a ball, paint it, and put number 200 on there against Caston with a plus 60 margin. (laughs) He did Uh, it in style. He did it in style. The team did it in style. They brought him home. I tell you, if someone didn't get him a ball and do it, let me know. I'll go buy the ball and somebody can write on it (laughs) because he deserves it. I don't know that I've ever seen a plus 60 margin at Triton. We're checking some records. Uh, Chief Engineer over here, Ryan Lemler, he's ready for us to sign off and get going. Uh, Thanks for listening to the Triton Trojan Sports Network. I'm Bill Keel. And I'm Carson Kraft saying good night and God bless.